Wow. Wow. Where'd you get this footage from? Video music box. Say what? Ralph McDaniels. Super early. Damn. You gotta, you gotta email me that. We was open. <laughs> Who is that? During that time, that era, I mean, we was just excited. You know what I'm saying? Like super duper excited because we had a record before that, like an album that we did that, you know, it didn't do so good or whatever, whatever. Then we got a second shot and, you know, back against the wall. We was in there just making music and came up with the Shook Ones joint. The first one, it, it was dope. You know, it was a new start. But when it didn't catch too much traction, we started getting the jitters, you know what I mean? So we was like, uh, this song is good. But well, come on, we could do better. What was that topic about for you? Why was it so important to point out the real ones from the Shook Ones? I mean, we was going through a lot of things, you know, in the hood growing up. A lot of people perpetrating the fraud, you know, just fake dudes acting like they tough, but they not, you know, end up getting locked up or whatever, or, or, you know, shot. And they wasn't really built for it. They not built for that, you know. And uh, that was just one of the topics that we felt like, yo, everybody in our generation could relate to that because, you know, growing up in the hood, I'm, I'm sure it was like that for people all across the states wherever you at, people perpetrating a fraud, you know, just fraudulent people. So we just like, let's talk about that. How did that beat come together? Just me being in my house, you know what I mean, in the projects, you know, sitting around, old dusty records, put this one record on, slap that one together, do this. A little bit of, you know, uh, creativity, other than what producers were doing at the time, playing with the record, and it just, came out. I was using the MPC-60 and the Isonic EPS Plus keyboard. The The drums was uh, vinyl door breaks that I had copped from going to the, you know, little record conventions or whatever. The uh, Jessica record uh, that was just sitting on the floor. Quincy Jones. I was just was putting them together. <laughs> it was literally sitting on the floor. Yeah, we was walking over them. We was walking on top of them, over them. Records crazy, scratch, didn't care about them one way or the other. You know, I guess the the dirtier the better. And it, it, it took a while, but it took off. And we just started, get, you know, getting the chance to perform it. And the reaction was just crazy, like, you know. So what's the first memory, the first time you and P ever bumped into each other at school? Uh, my first memory is just really hearing them come through the hallways with all this jewelry on, you know what I mean? You could hear them, like, you know, mad feet away, jewelry. Then you see him, this little short kid with all this jewelry on, like Slick Rick. It's like, yo, who is that? Why do we got all that jewelry on? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, you know, it was just weird. When I met him, when I saw him, we became friends, we was tight, hanging out, you know, rap partners, and, you know, I probably brought him to Queensbridge real quick, and then, you know, he brought me to, uh, you know, Long Island, and and then we was just back and forth with it. I was too careful. P was more risky, you know what I'm saying? More of a risk taker. I was the one saying, no, let's do it like this. You know, we got to format it, and P would be like, fuck your format, let's do it this way. And nine times out of 10, he'd be right. What was your first trip to Loud Records like? The first trip to Loud Records, it, was, it wasn't nothing uh, great or extravagant about it. It was an office that was smaller than this room we sitting in right now, with Steve Rifkin sitting in it with a desk. Very humble beginnings, but you could look at his expression in his eyes and knew that this dude was going to take it somewhere else because the energy was just there in his talk. He was pretty sure 
of what he was going to do. And you don't hear that many people talking like that at that time. Take us back to the sessions for the infamous. Oh, had had our whole block in the studio for the infamous sessions. Maddie C, Scott, really hands on, giving their feedback and ideas. A lot of 40s, a lot of weed, you know, but really a lot of hard work. Sometimes we would have the rhymes already, and sometimes we would write in the studio. And most of the time, I would make the track in the studio. It actually helped me, you know, to have people around, you know, critiquing the work, supporting the work, as opposed to just being by yourself and not really knowing where to gauge what you're doing. So it, I, I loved the energy that was around. Without it, I don't even think I would have been able to make it. If we would have just followed the way I wanted to do it, it would probably wouldn't have worked in, in, in certain aspects. So it made it good because it was like night and day. I was more careful. He was more of a risk taker. And, and so that those two elements combined probably, you know, would produce something good in certain situations. I felt kind of bad saying chill because I feel like I was holding him back from doing something, but I think it was for the best sometimes. You know, for instance, uh, it, it, it's, I used to always tell him like, yo, son, you know, why you always walking around with this gun or having it in your car or whatever? He wasn't trying to hear it and he got locked up, but he would always say after he came out, like, yo, all I could hear is your voice telling me to chill with the with the gun, you know what I mean? And he said that on numerous occasions, you know. But it is what it is, everything happens for a reason. But, you know, I, I was the voice of reason sometimes in his head. About the memorial service, I feel as though there was a tremendous outpouring of respect that was overdue. Yeah, you know, sometimes you feel a little bit of uh, things that you you underrated. And um, yeah, it did feel overdue. And just to be honest, you know, the outpouring of support due to this event felt bittersweet. And the reason why I said it felt bittersweet is because, you know, sometimes we would want to get like a feature from one of our favorite artists, something that might be popping at the time. And we probably couldn't even get a, a phone call back or text message back, but then you see everybody saying, yo, much love to you, prodigy. Oh man, your verses was crazy, this, that, and third. But then we couldn't get a verse from you when we was trying to get it. Not saying that I, I don't appreciate the support, but I think that we should start supporting our artists while they're here, even still. How did you feel to see the memorial wall to face and finally covered up? I didn't even get a chance to see it. The paint didn't even dry on the mural uh, before I seen the bullshit. I just feel that whoever had something against P, you understand, uh, not to diminish whatever feelings that they may have had, but I think that it was selfish because of your feelings, you want to neglect everybody from seeing this mural and the impact that this man had. So it's very, very selfish at the end of the day. And I can't even put it no more simpler than that. It was selfish and selfish act. But at the end of the day, I'm over it for the simple fact that I'm not gonna let them win and have me walking around here hurt. I know what my boy did, you know what I'm saying? I know how much he's worth and I'm happy for that. The Brooklyn Hip Hop Fest. Is that the first time that you actually rap his verse on a stage before? Huh, um, me and Prodigy, we done a lot of shows without each other due to just separate things we were doing. You know, so I, I rapped his verse before, you know, um, but this time it, it, it's different because it obviously for, for reasons, but it just hurts to know that he'll never be on stage with me again in the physical presence to uh, perform the verse with me. So it, it kind of chokes me up when I sing his verses, but you know, I'm just putting the energy out there for him and he's still here with me, you know, in the, in, you know, in, in the spiritual essence. So it, it's, it's a weird feeling, it hurts, but 
you know, I, I got to be vocal for them. You all alone in these streets, cousin. Every man for theyself in this land, we be hustling and keep the shoot crews running like they supposed to. They come around, but they never come close to.